last year, one week after Donald Trump convinced hundreds of Republicans to storm the United States Capitol to find and lynch Mike Pence, <sighs> sorry, sometimes I just say a sentence out loud and my brain just breaks a little bit. Let me continue. Um, a week after that, I posted a video about a news study that found that Republicans and Democrats each see each other as stupid and evil, unless they have very high levels of intellectual humility or slash end are just kind of politically apathetic. I took great pains in that video to point out that just because both sides believe that the other side is stupid and evil, it doesn't necessarily mean both sides are wrong. Uh, so keep that in mind as I talk about this very important update on the stupid and evil debate. Oh, also keep in mind that when I say stupid and evil, I'm using those words for comedic effect. So don't get hung up on things like whether or not evil truly exists in a godless universe. We're just talking about relative intelligence versus morality and how people see each other. By now, we've had loads of research that shows us that we all think of each other as stupid and evil, but it's important to drill down on exactly how stupid and how evil we all think each other is. Like, you know, since I've already mentioned him, let's consider Donald Trump. He's stupid and evil, yes. But are we talking 80% stupid and 20% evil? 60, 40, 30, 70, I, you think I'm joking, but that is sort of what this new paper is all about. Psychologists at UNC Chapel Hill surveyed more than a thousand people across four different studies to learn how people view their political opponents. Like they had one group read over a list of upcoming amendments that were broadly supported by conservatives and opposed by liberals, and then asking the subjects why they think those groups either did or did not support the amendments. They found that each side answered about the other, more or less, because they're stupid and evil. No big shock there. But uh, the subjects were more likely to emphasize the former. It was more about, to them, a lack of intelligence rather than a lack of morality. And that held true across all four of their studies. While it's generally bad to have a society as politically polarized as the United States because it leads to things like vaccines becoming a political issue when they aren't, um, it's actually kind of good news that we think of each other more as stupid than evil. Uh, stupid can be dealt with. I can talk more slowly. I can use smaller words. I can simplify complicated issues. But evil is just evil. You can't really debate someone out of an objectively immoral stance if the person making it is, in fact, an immoral person. You know, if someone says that they would like to bake live kittens into pies, and you ask why, and they say, because kittens can't feel pain, and it's the only pie that you can make, uh, you might be able to correct them on those points and perhaps share your own favorite strawberry rhubarb recipe with them. But if they say because it's fun to torture innocent creatures, there's really nowhere to go from there. They know it's awful. They just don't care. So by thinking of each other as stupid, maybe we're more likely to actually try to still have conversations with each other. While if we thought of each other as more evil, maybe we're more likely to just give up and start shooting each other with all of our many poorly regulated guns. America. Uh, that's ultimately what all of this research is aiming to solve. You know, how do we stop shouting at each other all the time and have meaningful political discourse? Back to that issue of both sides. You know, again, I must stress just because both sides tend to think of each other as stupid doesn't mean one side is right and one side is wrong. Both sides of the vaccine debate think the other side is stupid, but vaccines are an objectively good thing for humanity. And in my previous video on this topic, I explicitly mentioned the Capitol insurrection as an example of one side being pretty objectively immoral and unintelligent. 
And funny enough, the researchers in the study also brought that up when discussing the limitations of the study. The data we collected, to the extent they can be generalized to the American population, only reflect the participants' perceptions of their outgroups at the time the data were collected. Notably, we collected our data prior to the storming of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Significant events such as this one may have a large impact on political perceptions. However, the public discourse surrounding the event appeared to reflect our findings. On social and mass media, observers framed the right-wing protesters as misled, brainwashed, and manipulated. So more stupid than evil. And true. It's true. They were brainwashed and manipulated. Uh, the lead researcher of the study told SciPost that the next step is, in fact, to figure out how to improve political discourse. There's some work from our center suggesting that recognizing that people have good reasons for their beliefs reduces animosity, but we would still like to directly test whether we can change perceptions of intelligence and the extent to which doing so is beneficial. It's also likely that while political opponents see each other as more stupid than evil overall, there may be particular issues or contexts where that difference goes away or is even reversed. I went and read that other study she references, and it's a fun one. Um, basically, they found that people were more likely to respect a political adversary if the person is sharing their subjective experience rather than objective facts, especially if their experience involves some harm being done to them. Because if you're arguing against some political position because it directly harms you, your opponent will understand that you are being rational. It makes sense that you want to avoid being harmed. And understanding that someone's motivation is not due to being stupid or evil kind of forces a person to listen and respect you. If you just share objective facts, your political opponent can dismiss them as mistakes if you're stupid or lies if you're evil. One of the ways they investigated this was by combing through more than 300,000 YouTube comments, which is honestly the worst job that I can imagine. To make it even worse, those were comments left under nearly 200 videos about abortion. Dear God. They said that they chose YouTube because it's, quote, a social media platform known for disrespect, which is hilarious and true. They found that comments under fact-based videos were much, much more negative than those under videos in which a person was sharing their subjective experience. That was just one of a whole bunch of studies they conducted that led to the theoretical model for why subjective experiences are so good at winning people over. Personal stories seem truer than objective facts due to the respect that comes from uh, your opponent seeing you as a rational person. It's a good hypothesis, and it makes sense as an, extent, an, an extension of the basic idea that stories make us empathize with one another. We put ourselves in the place of our opponent, and we can then understand why they do the things they do. I find it all really interesting, and if you'd like to read either of those studies in full, I'm uh, happy to say that they are both available in, in open access. As always, you can find links to them in the transcript, which I link in the description box below. And as always, thank you so much to my patrons for making these videos possible. If you would like to join, head over to patreon.com slash Rebecca, and you can uh, join in on things like uh, weekly newsletters for $5 plus patrons, and also a monthly Ask Me Anything live stream, uh, which is available for $3 patrons and up. No question is too weird. I already regret saying that. <laughs>